subjects, whatever it is. And if I feel there's the right connection and I'm just over it, dude, I'm, I'm okay parting with one for nothing. But I try not, I, you don't want to be known for doing that. No. <laughs> no. Because then you got people that won't buy your art. Give me some. I've dealt with that too. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. I had a friend, um, a friend's partner who was like, oh, so if I just come over and hang out mm -hmm. with you guys and uh, you get, get too drunk and sentimental, I'm going to leave with art. And I was, I was really miffed. And then I was like, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. But yeah. then what does that say? Yeah. What does that say? Or, you know, doing shows and all end up. You don't want to be known for doing that too often. But you're going to have your moments. We all do. Yeah. But, you know, going back to Wayne White, when I, when I first was introduced to him, he came to MTSU to get a talk. And he talked about his beginnings and how, and, and he, he said he kind of lucked into it, just being naive. He went to New York, and I think it was New York. Got involved with Pee Wee's Playhouse, and just that, and, and and I can imagine him looking back on that opportunity, and how that led to so many other open doors. Yeah. Just because he took a chance. I mean, he he's like he went to New York. I don't think he had plans. It's a pretty. Uh, and he, uh, you know, he <laughs> fell into this opportunity that turned into be a big ass deal, and now he's doing stuff all over the place. He's he's got. And that's one thing I love too, because I like to work in more than one medium. And he does the big puppets. You know, he does the, the pen and ink drawings. He does paintings. He does collage. He does those. Yeah. Uh, you know, my favorites was his own uh, Goodwill paintings. He'd buy them and then paint the big letters on them. Oh, I love that. I love these. Are What's that, that freedom, that comfortability? You know, yeah. that, that maybe when you have some of that financial success, financial success rather. And I don't want to blank at anybody with that. Mm. But that, again, that's would be like, oh man, what areas could I play in? What things would I want to do? What would limit me to do those things? Whether it's cost of materials, travel, mm. if I, there's a lot of things that go like, oh, I want to travel and paint while I live. Ooh, yeah. I want to do these things. We're like, well, yeah, I, need, if, I need the money to do it and mm -hmm. I need the audience to receive it when I get back. So how, how different do you think artists would be if they were given this opportunity? Okay. If you're if you're an artist, you get X amount of time. Whatever you need is is handled, as long as you don't exploit it, you know, and waste the opportunity. How how many artists would just kill it? Can you imagine just being given free reign? You need to travel. You need a photo shoot done to inspire whatever project you got going on. It's handled. I just can. You, well, I'd like uh, the what, opportunity to yeah. <laughs> celebrate or disappoint. Maybe we look for a sponsor. They sponsor you and me mm -hmm. individually. And they fund everything. And we fight in a cage match? And we, we, that, after we make the art. We yeah, the yeah, or the, yeah. In, in between, we take yeah. a, a cage break. The battle is, yeah, in between. Come on, on to run, run, lose. But can you imagine the artwork that you can make? Say, you propose one, one subject or one art piece yeah. or a body of work maybe to uh, a, a patron here's what I'm going to do this is what it's going to cost and they say okay here's a check well patron system right Oof. yeah how cool would that be I mean of course back in the day was that not how it was done yeah that's exactly churches yeah. and you know the wealthy would hire artists to create these well it was, it was a viable it was a viable position I mean there was a whole hierarchy in expectation for training but the idea that that exactly. art artists creating art was was an elite thing that was a valuable thing whereas now I don't I think it's well, uh, socially arts, valuable people arts go a lot broader exactly it's, it's, it's yeah it covers more area now than it did back then yes I mean, and you had the, sculpture, the you had painting it seemed like back then yeah you and have we, mixed we, media we, collage, we do the thing video. And yeah. <laughs> you have so many varieties of artwork now yeah, and a variety of artists performing those same things. And I don't want to call them levels, but you have you have the hierarchy of artwork and artists from your novice that want to go paint and have a glass of wine mm -hmm. and paint these Christmas images or whatever it is for the holidays, all the way up to the conceptual artists that are creating these amazing works that are uh, motivated by politics or whatever social yeah they're really again what is that motivation drawn to yeah. yeah what what is coming out in that 
and then of course everything in between. I don't know. I don't know if uh, I, I, as much as I hate to say it, I think so, so much of it is that struggle, is saying that push and pull between like when I feel uh, based on my situation. I mean everything is situational, but especially mm -hmm. in this conversation. What what got pulled out of me and why? Because if it was just, hey, you know, that, that thing, being a freelance artist, I'm always going to make my best work. Of course you want to always make your best work, but your best work isn't always your best work. Mm -hmm. But you're like, oh no, I am, this is it. My next piece is going to be, I've got to make that next big piece. <laughs> oh, no. And I, like, I'll do one of those, I'll do something, whatever, successful or not, but I put it all in there and I, the, I swear, the next, you, you could chart it too, by my feed or website or anything. The next two or three pieces are comfort food. It'll be some tightly rendered, figurative portrait thing. Not that that's not a lot of my stuff, but I'll be right. like, oh, this is safe. This is safe. I feel I ran back here. Yeah, I made, I made the piece I knew. Yeah. And, and I'd like to think a lot of times I bring back some of the the exciting choices. And I think I do mostly, but still, Probably still coming you're back. Not, you're using some of those experimental things from the painting before, but probably not as much as you should. Oh You're yeah, not yeah. Pushing it. It's a rubber band. I, I, I'm totally yeah. the same way. I'm like, oh, this worked in that last one. I'm like, yeah, this one's going well. I don't want to screw it up. So I won't yeah, do it as much. Yeah, exactly. It's that, for me, it's that comfort food. No, I don't want to screw up. I, I, I need to know I can think. do this. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, you should be. I mean, whenever I teach, it, uh, that's that's Grant Cooley 101 is, it, it's not precious. Yeah. Nothing's precious. Nothing. I was doing a demo, Jerry's, and talking to this young man and his dad were there talking about education and opportunities for teaching. And I just got on a tear about something. Literally, I was like, okay, the biggest thing I can let you walk away from is if you want to get better at drawing or anything, is that you have to be able to let it go. I was like, so, like this, because I took one of the demo pieces. I was like, no, no, this one's actually really good. I want to do more of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I said that here. It illustrated the way. And then there was something else that was like, oh, it's this neat skull ink wash thing. And I was like, see this? This Okay. This has got some neat stuff happening it, but I've done a bunch of these. And yeah. I just ripped it up, threw it on the ground. And he was like, oh my God. <laughs> and again, it was not an entirely radical departure because I did say, like, oh, yeah. no, I don't, I'm not going to do that to this because I actually I, I like what's going on here. Yeah. Uh, but that sense of, okay, I made a thing. What am I going to do with the thing? Like going to figure drawing. That's why almost, almost all my figure drawing drawings and figure painting stuff become free art drops because mm -hmm. what am I going to do yeah. with one more face? Yeah. Like hopefully yeah. I pushed some stuff. you've done so much. Exactly. It, it, it's the it, doing of it that yeah, is actually it's valuable. The, uh, it, was a, it was part of the process of learning, not necessarily the finish. It yeah. Was, it, was just, it was like one brush stroke in what you're doing now. And maybe that's part of the, the, yeah. the patron thing you're talking about. Like if, if you had that that deep breath, those deep breath moments where you can go, ah, oh, what do I need from this? What do I need? Yeah. Not what am I giving people, but what do I need from this and how can I How's get it to it? How's it going to make me feel better? I, it, it's got to, because mm -hmm. more often than not, my art does not make me feel better. Mm -hmm. I feel, I feel alive creating, but I disintegrate my self-esteem in a lot of work. And I think that's, that's the work I should be doing. Yeah. I go like, oh. Oh, I don't know. Oh, no, no, it's gonna wow. like I just man. Let you know, let those demons have their play for a moment, and they go, okay, cool. I'm, I'm all over it. Yeah. I wish I could okay. say it was that easy, because yeah. more often than I'm like, oh, we can talk about how can I? Long. Doing is the problem. Yeah. You move past it. I, what yeah. allows you to do it? And you're right. What would most artists do with it? And it's so funny. I, I, of course, in my process, I'm sitting there all day. Things running through my head. I'm just cutting paper. It's 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 a note. I don't think about much, especially if I've already chosen colors and things like that. It's it's just busy work. So my mind's just running ideas after another. And I, sometimes I'll record that, either write it on a notepad, sketchbook, or whatever. But I, I come up with these all all these cool ideas that I think, okay, what I need to start doing is this every day. And and I and I, I don't know how many times I've done that. And I've yet to start doing anything right outside of my normal routine. <laughs> I know. I, I love writing myself new schedules. Ooh, I love looking at me like, yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start every day doing this. Oh, I got 20 and sketchbooks going because each one's for a different project. Oh yeah, I'm gonna commit it because this one I'm gonna yeah. rock. And I can't wait to look back. Like, oh, I'm gonna grab this sketchbook today. Yeah. So yeah, they're just random. I, it, yeah, all of my sketchbooks. There's there's no rhyme or reason. 
You can pick one up and it's got something from today in it and it's got something from 2009 in it. Any of them are like that. It's so weird. I, I, I don't stay with the same sketchbook for a certain amount of time. Or till it's full. Yeah. You start another one. No, just, no, I just no. Have I've them got all over the house. No, I, but I like that because I, I, I used to be like, oh, gotta have my sketchbook. Like, oh, then I have to go find it. Or yeah, I always I, had one I with me. In the past. sketchbook. Not me. Yeah, but then when I started just leaving them around places and making sure I had drawing utensils in mm -hmm. the living room, in the den, in a couple in the studio, in the car, in my yeah. travel bag, then I found that I actually, at least for a while, started drawing more. I was like, oh, I can just yeah. go. All right, I'm gonna write I'm down like, this idea. Mine are more like journals. Oh yeah. That's I have a good. visual, but I'll usually describe it with text. Mm -hmm. um, whether it be an idea for doing a project or a painting or whatever it is, but I, I will sketch some things. But it's funny. I, I just that's a, that's one of the things I've been trying to get myself to do is to, to get back to drawing. I haven't been drawing anything. Drawing is brutal though. You have it to is. do it if you, you, you want to do it. That's stuff. why I think yeah. if I just did 15 minute drawings things a day or something. One sketching a book and I started that maybe twice I did I'd sketch something in the studio real quick and uh, all right I'll do that again tomorrow you know well it's, it's brutal you know. because you want it to look that's the thing is unless you're in out your of the mind habit, it's gotta be yes it's, it's, it's gotta, it's be, gotta right. be this thing and you you it becomes more precious and you're like oh oh but it wasn't this now I'm Why disappointed I now I diminished it. myself doing this drawing when that is I'm, I'm really really trying to push myself past that thing and sometimes again I'm there and I feel like oh yeah I'm really I'm making some I'm making some awesome lines yeah. it doesn't matter what I'm drawing I'm just fill up page after page and I'm like oh man this was a great way to start the day yeah. or finish the day or yeah. just whatever it's like this is so valuable to me and then other times like I'm gonna sit down and I need to draw a thing yeah I'm like oh it's God, look I, like, yeah I don't want I'm gonna draw the same face You're I've been drawing for 20 yeah. years like, oh, thanks so much. Cool. That's basically me as a woman. That's me as an ogre. That's me with the space helmet on. And like, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, why? Like, and and it'll look bad, and I won't care about it. And it'll be like, cool. So I just filled up some page, and it's like, nah. Here we go. It's that. But that's, that's the thing. Is like, I think that push and pull. Where sometimes but I do. you succeed, and sometimes you you yeah. fall on your butt. And well, like, and sometimes you don't realize you succeeded. You think you failed, but oh, when yeah. you look at it five years goes by and you're flipping through old sketchbooks and you run across something that you hated then but you're like you know that's not too bad yeah, I right. can see that going somewhere hey thanks past me uh -huh. it's rare but it is rare. I see something that rare. I really love from whether it be five years ago or ten years ago these are I'm just like, the stories wow. we tell ourselves yeah because you're like oh this one is bad but I know the future me is gonna be like high five past me this is right the definition of being an artist is being a little crazy because we talk to ourselves all the time all the time we're constantly debating things. Um, what's good? What's bad? What's right? What's wrong? Yeah. Do I do this? Do I do that? Do I, should I care? <laughs> should, yeah. <laughs> and then you go. So you know, we went to that Wayne White exhibit. You know, all over the place. You think does this does this person and and probably almost assuredly does this person feel some of these same struggles? Because the people, some of the buds who are. You think they get to that point? Cook, you think it goes you know, away like, or does it stay? Yeah, that they yeah. they have uh, Scott Fisher. These guys, when they get real, they're saying, "Yeah, I still feel this. I still feel this." And some have, a, a, you know, obviously a, a spectrum of emotions, but even the really successful ones, there's still echoes of that. They might be more comfortable, or when they're really comfortable, then they talk about how they haven't made any original work in a while. Yeah. It's just like oh, just been doing fine work. Oh yeah. no, this and they've got money. Yeah. They're rolling and they're doing awesome and they're they're creating really good work at a very high level. But what they want to be creating. exactly. But they still feel like, man, that was just another Johnny Cash in a way. It's just yeah. That, how do I push past that? And so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Look, it looks like I'd like to find out what it's like on the other side. When it, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You look at Wayne what he does. Of course, it's almost like all his work and. Julia Martin is amazing but you know it feels like to me like he doesn't have to care anymore so he just you know how free and loose that work comes across to oh me? yeah it's almost I, like I hope it's, it's echoed so in his, easy his, his that's what I'm wondering is he thinking shit this is easy I'm just going to sit here I don't care if nobody wants to buy this and I don't care yeah, how I'm going to scribble on this I'm going to scribble on this piece of paper I picked up off the studio floor and it's going to be Hank Williams yeah I'm going to make him blue and he's, you know, he's I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna because clearly the folds in that uh, that one to the left 
just simple little sienna line work and just it, the folds came across oh, so yeah. lovely just like oh i'm just i'm drawing this and then i'm gonna get crazy yeah. inside here as, as you get away from the face it got more abstract but it looked just like the jacket i want to get to the place because i think yeah for me it's honestly, confidence i think is what that is confidence is always it uh yeah. for me where i'm at now a lot of it just comes down to making work that is going to be seen. Of course, I, I need to make money. I don't know how to do it, but I don't want to do things to make money, going back to the beginning of this conversation. Right. But for me, I want to make the things I make that I'm excited about, I want them to have a home. Like when I've got a gig or a show coming up, or especially a good gig, I'm like, okay, it already has a home. Or the, the, you know, the publishing company started. Making these role-playing games, the biggest boon from it, because it certainly wasn't financial, is <laughs> Never uh, every piece I do for Enoch has a home. Every alien, every drawing, every ink drawing, every painting has a home. I can find a place, even if it's just another just another portrait, we'll have a whole appendix of, of just portraits you can use to play your character or something, but it, it has a home. It's going to go somewhere. The, Owning, selling the work, of course, is a very significant secondary need. But it, it was just like it has a use. I made this for a reason. Rather than some esoteric thing, I can get bonkers and crazy, and I love doing that. But knowing that this, it already had exactly. I knew what was going to happen with it. Because when I put all that time and effort into whatever fine art pieces or exploratory pieces. I don't know what's going to happen with it. Is it going to end up in my attic? Is it going to end up being given away to someone? What do you like more? Knowing where it's going to go? Knowing it has a home or knowing that you don't know if it's going to have a home? I want, to, I, want to, I want to know that it has a home. It doesn't necessarily even have to be a financial thing. It's just that I made something and it moved something else along. Yeah. And I can take those chances within that environment because I'm like, this is going to get crazy and like, cool. Then it will enhance the project. It's been a weird thing rather than just doing freelance work or just doing gallery work or pop-up shows. You do artwork. Oh, there's a thing for the show. Do the thing. I'm like, well, no matter how much I loved it or disliked it. Oh, sure thing. Everything was wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, um, it's yeah. like at the, end of the, at the end of the show, I made that piece. I was part of the group, and it's a different objective. But I don't know what the home. thing is. Normally, I give it away, honestly. Oh, I really? Again, I shouldn't say it, but I do. Uh, um, but knowing that, I don't know, that just there's a little checkbox that goes off in my heart. It's like, okay, cool. This lives somewhere. Because when I put all that time... And effort. I have, I'm very motivated to make the best work I can that's right. going to get out.